What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We are the Brothers Murphy. This is the best of PGG. Let's get it. Best of BG. We're talking about Time. all the hottest stuff on BGG. The Talk about it. Top 10 hot games, a couple personal picks of our own, some news, and actually, speaking of the news, let's just get right into it. Easy intro. <laughs> Board Game Geek News, we got a big old store update, including new titles coming in to the store that you can buy in uh, Hell's Kitchen and Redemption Row, the Marvel Unmatched sets that just came out, and Wonderland's War, which is Cruising on the hotness you'll see in a, in a minute. So we've got a couple new titles. We've got things like Sleeping Gods returning to stock because that one is, keeps on selling out and a whole ton more. You can pre-order things like Planet Unknown, Return to Darkness, and Mortem. And there's uh, new Dice Tower promos, including uh, uh, promos for uh, Sheriff of Nottingham. There's promos in the BGG store for Anno 1800 and more. There's even cool accessories like BG Shield where you can sort of make all of your game components hydrophobic. And so on the uh, little example, they have one of the uh, monster, the guardian tiles in Lost Ruins of Arnok with a drop of water just beat it up perfectly and no damage done to the tile. So you can protect your games like never before uh, with BG Shield. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that is just a mere fraction of it. The BGG store is gonna be represented at BGG Spring as well. So you can pick up things directly and take them right to the game that you're playing. There's gonna be a lot of stuff uh, going on. So check out the big update for the BGG uh, store because I didn't cover nearly all of it, but go ahead and click on that, click on that, and click on that, you know what I'm saying, in the description of the video. <laughs> <sighs> Our second bit of news is that the BGG Golden Geek Awards are open. We had the nominations a couple weeks ago and now the voting for the best game of the year, the best light game of the year, medium game, heavy game, podcast, all bunch of different stuff is open right now. Hey. <laughs> so in this segment, uh, I mostly am telling you to go vote on the BGG uh, Golden Geek Awards, except for right after we finish editing this, uh, they announced them. <laughs> and so this entire segment is me telling you to go vote on them because I didn't think they would get it out this quickly, but they did. So we're actually going to go ahead and talk about all the BGG uh Golden Geek Award winners next month. Um, but nonetheless, uh, congrats to everyone who won. Uh, yeah. So... So this is awkward. Make sure to vote on your favorite games of the year. So that's just a little bit of board game geek news for you, but we're here to talk about the hottest games of the month. Wow. What people cannot stop talking about. This is fire. Let's get into the hotness. All right, so this is gonna be the top 10 hottest games of the month. These are games that have been on the hotness, up and down, and they kind of like, Overall, what people have been talking about, what, what people have been clicked like, on the most, on. what they've rated the most, all sorts of things like that. This will be the hottest games month, starting with number 10. Number 10, the proverbial classic that is Dune Imperium. Modern classic, yeah. I mean, it's just always around. It's always around. It's <laughs> Although it, it almost didn't make it this month, so that's yeah. the first time it almost didn't make it. But it's Dune Imperium. It's been around. It came out in 2020. People absolutely love this game. Um, people love Dune. Just oh, watch the movie that Dune again. It's great. It's great. It's, it's great. got that expansion now. It's people got that it. kind of collector's edition, uh, the upgraded bits, rather. I mean, there's yeah. just a lot of cool stuff going it's on. It's just cool. It's Dune Imperium. It's here every month. Um, but nonetheless, it's number 10, and uh, people love it. So let's get number nine. So number nine is a two-player version of a game called Cryptid. This is Cryptid Urban Legends. Yeah, I'm interested in this one. Me too. I watched a playthrough of this, and it's interesting where now you have, just because it's two players, one person playing as a Cryptid yeah. is basically trying to evade capture, and the other the other yeah. side is trying to sort of uh, surround them and circle them and stuff. But it's got this really interesting kind of like two-row system yeah. of, of these buildings and then these uh, cubes that are around, and the way you manipulate and move those cubes and stuff kind of fuel a bunch of a bunch of things and and uh if you're the crypt you're sort of just trying to like stay alive yeah you're stay, just trying to, trying to avoid stay away capture. long enough to avoid capture and um the playthrough was really interesting i was like okay that's kind of cool like crypt is a game for us that like sort of was a miss it didn't really work for us but i feel like maybe we just haven't played with the right group yet so seeing a two player specific version of a game like this of trying to deduce and evade a sort of hidden movement kind of thing. Yeah. I was like, man, that might be that might the work. version that we need to try yeah. of this. So I'm, I'm definitely down to give it a try. For yeah. Sure. So of, of course other people agree that it's something that's uh, worth their interest and it's number nine on the hotness. Let's get number eight. 
Number eight is Anunnaki Dawn of the Gods, right. which is a kind of a big 4X Euro game Euro that actually game. seems pretty darn cool by Simone Luciani, who we do like a lot. We do indeed. So yeah, this is a game where you're uh, kind of doing like a classic, you know, a lot of uh, peeps on the map stuff. Yeah, where you're yeah. building up uh, troops and things and, and you are- He's on area control. Yeah, yeah, and you're playing these houses, uh, which to like the, the kind of the people on the ground, boots yeah, on the ground yeah. folk, uh, view as gods yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So you're sort of, uh, inhabiting gods trying to take over each other's armies. Uh, trying to trying take over to, like, Atlantis, which has a ton of treasure. Yeah, in that's it. really cool. Seems like it's kind of like a king of hill, a, a, a king of a hill kind of thing, where like once you get there, you're kind of trying to stay trying on top, to and everyone's it. kind of coming at you. And yeah, stuff. and so and you can you can but develop your own so like, I know, so I'm okay. curious to see like. Okay. How, what, what makes it the Euro game? Because yeah. that's the kind of thing that I could get into. Yes, indeed. For sure. But Anunnaki, Dawn of the Gods, good Seems designers cool. who we uh, like. Uh, Looks cool nice theme. too. It's, it's so it's like definitely interesting. Yeah, I want to find out more for sure. But that is number eight on the hotness. Let's get to number seven. Number seven expansion for my favorite game, which is Viticulture. This is Viticulture World. This a is a cooperative expansion. I know, I'm that does very, a bunch of different and stuff. And it seems very big to the point where we're almost kind of like, man, this almost could have been its own thing. Yeah. But yeah, you're going to like different regions of the world and like exploring like viticulture and winemaking in those different regions. It seems super, super cool. And it's like, it's and people ask me, about like, are you guys gonna play it? We're like, yeah, it's viticulture. Absolutely. Like, yeah, of, of course. course. So yeah, I don't know much about it. I, it's one of the kind of things where, like, when I'm really excited for a movie, I don't like to like watch trailers. I'm like, I don't really haven't really looked up anything about it. I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, it seems cool. Um, and yeah, I'm just I like viticulture, and so, but I'm also I'm kind of interesting because like. I'm very content with Viticulture. Like Viticulture with Tuscany, sure. I'm kind of like, cool, I don't necessarily need any more Viticulture. So this is also one of these, like for whatever reason, I don't like this expansion. I'm gonna kind of be like, yeah, whatever. I still At the end of the world, Tuscany, yeah, it yeah. doesn't ruin a game for you. I'm just so excited to see that as co-op and how are we gonna work together? And yeah. The board is different and stuff. And to, to see Seems how very it functions, uh, I'd be very curious. So yeah. that is uh, something that a lot of people are, are, have on their minds and we certainly have on our minds. That's Indeed. Viticulture World. Indeed, let's get number six. Number six, a 4X game in one hour. It has been billed that way since I've we've heard about it I've, from our good friend Roy I've heard that proven too. Yes. I've heard people play like eight player games in like 90 minutes. And I'm like, this is what? Last Light, which is designed by our good friend Roy Kennedy of the Dice Tower. And that's why he's always, he's like, I love, he loves those big 4X games. Yeah. I want to make a big 4X game that plays like in an hour. And people it's have all they like played, simultaneous. Yeah, like they play like as much as you eight possibly player can games have. like 90 yeah. minutes. And we were like, whoa, so I'm this like, is a game. What? Every, we, we've seen Roy at like Beach G Con, Dice Tower conventions, all this kind of stuff, and, and he, we've <laughs> tried to meet up to play this so many different times and somehow never act, end up getting yeah. to do it. But nonetheless, super excited for a good friend Roy, and people really, really like this game. It's funded on, on GameFound. Uh, people seem to be really, really into it. And it's just cool to see someone we've known for a long time. Oh, wait, Talking about this project for a long for time. For a long time now. We've yeah. heard about this for so long and he really like shopped around at different publishers, got it picked up by Gray Fox. And it's just, it's so cool to see the whole thing come to fruition. I can't wait till it's getting into people's hands. because This might just, be the Forex game for us too, because right? like, we like those types of games, but don't always have the time to dedicate yeah. to them. So this might be like, okay, we can get that, that hit of Forex space exploration yeah, goodness in a much quicker amount of time. Indeed, so super excited for our good friend Roy Candy and Last Light, and that's number six on the hotness. Let's get number five. So number five is a game that, uh, yeah. you know, uh, it kind of a game was, we saw a long time well, ago. Well, it was on Kickstarter right in the beginning of 2020, yes. as were other ones, and this is a big game. This is Foundations of Rome uh, by Emerson Matsuchi, which is ultimately a light game that has like, this is like that, Production to the to tenth degree, a bananas degree. Where every yeah. building is this cool 3D uh, building that you put down onto this board. So this is a game that has been a long time coming, yeah. and I think it's popped up on the hotness because people are finally yeah, getting finally getting their it, yeah. big old sweet super deluxe version of this game. Uh, and getting to finally play it, which has got to be exciting. I've always heard it's really, really good. I know it's very, very produced, you know, very, oh, yeah. very produced. Oh, but yeah. it's, it's Emerson Matsuchi who doesn't make like big, big, heavy games. And this one is, like I said, it's pretty light. Yeah. It's got pretty quick setup and stuff like that. But yeah, you're like building up these buildings, you're building up Rome and stuff like that. And right. it's a cool, it looks cool. And again, the production is like, off the charts and I, I am interested in it because it's just so it's such a weird thing to have a, such a humongous thing be ultimately a pretty light game yeah. <laughs> you know and it's kind of like oh kinda, man so I do really cool. want to try it but it's getting yeah. people's hands people are excited about it and yeah Foundation Room seems cool yeah, yeah. we definitely want to check it out it seems like people are excited yeah. to have it so it's number five on the hotness let's get into number four Number four is a game uh, that we've actually gotten to play a couple times. We really, really, really like, and that is Wayfarers of the South Tigris, which is right. on Kickstarter right now. Went the on Kickstarter. Beginning of a whole new trilogy. I know a whole new trilogy. It's like you think of the success of the West Kingdom trilogy by Garfield Games, and you're like, 
man, like you just like you, it's it, it was so successful. Where do in terms you go of, like, from there? You know, in terms of like it sold well, people really really loved that yeah. trilogy, and then we really like Wayfarers of the South Tigris to the point where I'm like, man, like if this is the first one in this new trilogy, it's like, oh my gosh, what's the What's the East trilogy going to be like? Yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. be so good. It's, it's so Garfield Games, the team has really done a good job over the last number of years. So I think they've built up a reputation a and quality. people have a, a yeah. firm belief in their ability to design and they keep backing it up. Yeah, so it's they like, do. all right, uh, Shem and Sam just uh, are these this great duo of designers. Uh, so Wayfarers, we can say from personal experience, is fantastic really and good. deserves its praise. It's really uh, and it's cool to see it show up on the hotness like that. Yeah, that's yeah. number four. Let's get number three. Number three is Autobahn, which Mike is not about the Autobahn. It's not. It's it is actually, it's about yeah, no, it's about the Autobahn. <laughs> it's about building up the Autobahn, but kind of in three eras, starting with like the end of World War II. Up until like now, basically. Yeah, yeah. kind of construction the Autobahn and then building up that kind of infrastructure. So this is a game that we're personally interested in. First of all, it looks beautiful. It's really pretty. Yeah. And really uh, pretty. it includes a lot of stuff that you like to see. Like you have like route buildings, mm -hmm. you're building the Autobahn, the roads and things like that. And then like you're like that. delivering resources along those routes to the different countries, which I think is kind of like, re it's, yeah. it's nice when you can build a route and then you get to use your route for stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, that kind of building up the route, then the pick up and deliver. You can build like petrol stations and yeah. stuff to kind of fuel the infrastructure yeah. that, now that, you know, this is, and it's real life. Like if you have a road going somewhere, you need to have some stuff along yeah, that yeah, road. You gotta have a, you gotta have <laughs> Especially a, you gotta have a Wendy's or two. You yeah, know? you know, you need people to be able to eat and get some yeah. gas and maybe sleep. And so I like the idea of kind of building up the roads and then kind of building up the infrastructure around yeah. And that. I really like that it's it's from like post World War II, and it's in kind of three eras all the way up to date. I think it's really cool to see like, hey, this is then, and then kind of a little while ago, and then now. I just think it's a yeah. cool concept, really cool, uh, and it's really pretty. So I, I'm very interested yeah. in Autobahn. This is gonna be one that we like. We'll get our hands on as quick yeah. as we can. Yeah, uh, once it seems it real available. cool. Yeah, that's Autobahn number three. Uh, super excited for it. Let's get number two. Number two is hitting people's hands right Dude, now. Number two is is cooking. People right now. are loving this. This game. is uh, Wonderland's War. Yeah. This is a uh, people call it Battle Quacks. It's battle Quacks of Quillenbergish, where you're putting stuff into a bag and pulling these yeah. these discs out of a bag, but you're using it to kind of facilitate area control. Yeah. All set in the Alice in Wonderland universe. Yeah, and it's done by uh, it's done by Skyline Games, Druid City Games, so it's very very well produced, kind of big game. We got to play this game back hey, when it was on Kickstarter. Uh, uh, James Husband <laughs> of Druid City Games hit us up because we're all here in LA, and he came over to our place and we played it, but that was years ago now. It was back in the beginning of 2020. Yeah, well. and yeah. so it's one of those things where like at this point, we're kind of like, oh yeah, that's right. Like we, we liked the game, we played it, and so we, we actually have a copy of it, we just got it. And so we haven't had a chance to play, but I'm really excited to try it again. But it's hitting people's hands, and people are really, really enjoying yeah. it. It seems like it's just and so, people are talking about it a ton. Yeah, it's so well produced. The art is really cool. It's got art by Manny Tremblay, so yeah. it's it's uh, it's just cool and kind of cartoony. It feels Alice in Wonderlandy, yeah. but also has the the war. You know, it's, yeah. it's Alice in Wonderland when things are a little very bit violent, tumultuous. You know? Yeah, yeah, right. So, much so death. <laughs> this is one that has done really well for itself, and you've yeah. seen it kind of over the month. We saw it really keep yeah. on climbing upward, which is why it landed at number two. Yeah. Uh, out, to be outdone by one game, which I bet you can't guess. Uh, but Wonderland's War uh, is just a beautiful, and it's number two on the hotness. Let's get to number one. Shocker. You'll never believe this, Ark Nova. It hit the top 100 of all time eight weeks ago, and it's at 25 it's at as 20, of the time of 24, this recording. 24, as of recording this right now, I mean, it has just people have been loving it. And you're right, we love us. it. It's, it's right, it's right, right, it's right here. We love it's it. It's super good. <laughs> but man, I mean, it's just like, it's, so it's just wild. on this trajectory, it has not slowed down. It really does. I mean, it's something we were just talking about this before, like, it doesn't seem to show any signs of slowing down. No, and now you're, really. you know, in in the, the top 25 games of all time, you're really dealing with heavy hitters, games that have been around, been upvoted by so many people over so many years, and it's just cutting through all yeah, of them. It and really you, is. you can't help but wonder, like, where is it going to Well, it's land? like now it's been a couple months where it's, for a, while, for a long time, up until, you know, March, late February, it wasn't really available here in the States. And now for, for a month or so, it's been available. And I right. think everyone's been getting, Getting everyone's been playing it. it. Yep. And it's one of those situations where people have been playing it and people have been liking it. And we, we really like it. But last month, it was like, it was number two for the first, I mean, it was number one for like two or three months in a row. There's number two, we're like, oh, it's lost its spot. And then the entire <laughs> just, month, it's just been parked at number one. We're like, well, I guess it's number one again. Right, it's doing We just love fine it, I mean, we love Ark Nova. We got yeah. to play it again this month. It's just, I played it six times last month. I really like it. It's gotten some love. It's. Yeah, people love it. It's people really absolutely solid. love it. As we always say, it's a game that really has earned its praise, so we can't be yes. mad that it's doing really well. But that's the top 10 hottest games of the month. Indeed. These are, again, the games that people are talking about the most out there. 
Arc Nova is kind of a no surprise. Kind of a no surprise. But what are people actually playing? Yeah, because so talk is something, but play is We another. always go in the very end, talk about the most, the top 10 most played games, at least people without logging them on BGG. Um, and so we, we're gonna go ahead and start. Number 10 was Seven Wonders Duel, which had 4,672 plays. That one's always it's not close to 10. Game. It's it's mm -hmm. always it's always up there, you know? Yeah, you got Space Base, which is now on Board Game Arena. I've contributed like, to Space this. Space Base, why is that? Oh, that's right, it's on Board Game it Arena. It works really well on Board Game Arena. I've contributed a, a few of these plays to it. It's on a 5,085 plays. Okay, well we have deserved. the Crew Mission Deep Sea, which is, a very, again, a very quick day game with 5,000 225. This game gets played a lot. Yeah. You know this. We got Terraforming Mars uh, is on 5,254. Still surprised plays. that one's just just played so every Man, single time. People love it, and and I, I again I don't yeah, blame them. It's Terraforming Mars, and then we had the crew, the Quest of Planet Nine, the original crew, uh, which was uh, sorry 6,764 plays. Beautiful. We have got Cascadia, always a contender. Get 6,981 plays. Gets to the table. Gets to the table. It, it does. I mean, you can play multiple games back to back very easy. True. E very easy to play game. Yeah, and then Wingspan was 7,249. Again, always kind of up here in the top 10. And then number three, Mikey, again, it's Arc Nova. Impressive. Not everyone has it yet. Oh my god. It's gosh. already crushing, and it's actually one spot shy of number two. Yeah. So Arc Nova is on a 7,293 plays, many plays, Azul is on 7,294 plays. And Azul's on BGA. <laughs> so Arc Nova could have very easily been number two. That goes to show just how many people are playing Arc Nova. It's wild. I mean, wow, wow, wow. And then number one, this one's kind of always up here, and that's Marvel Champions. Uh, the card game is 9,815. This one's always using the top three. People will be loving it. But oh, yeah. again, people, I mean, just Marvel Champions, just people playing over, 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 oh, over, yeah, and over, and over again. Content. I know, it's just, content. it's absolutely insane. And man, oh man, oh man. But uh, Arc Nova's the one where we're like, Wow, right. like, holy crap. That's no, not a short game. <laughs> it's not. That is the most played games of the month and the hottest games of the month. Let's get back up here and let's talk about our personal picks. Let's get into some Murph picks. So for my Murph pick, I'm choosing a, uh, a designer diary from, I think my favorite designer, has to be my favorite designer, Uwe Rosenberg who has a game uh, coming out with Spielworks called Oren Einberger Canal. I probably got some of that right. Uh, Oren Einberger Canal is uh, a one or two player, uh, big old heavy uh, Uwe Rosenberg game where you're kind of building these structures and you can kind of connect them with bridges and things and you have to build all these pathways kind of around the cards that you're playing out uh, in this kind of tight, taut, resource management and, and game where you're really about timing out the structures uh, and when to use them is, is key, when to actually use them, because you only use them a couple times. So this is gonna be a big old game that I'm gonna learn more about, but I really enjoy the designer diary because Uwe goes into uh, kind of how the game ended up becoming the heavy game that it is because it wasn't always intended to be this way. It's sort of a successor uh, to Lahav. It's kind of designed off of the uh, structures that, that he built in Lahav and has taken that and sort of uh, continuing to uh, meditate on those types of, uh, of design mechanisms. Um, so that's something that's really cool. Like I did not know that Oret Labora was also based kind of on Lahav. That was in the designer diary. I was like, oh, that's neat. And this is sort of another successor to Lahav. Uh, Uwe talks about going into a cafe with some bits of paper and ideas for a game and sort of like left that cafe with a rule book for the game. And then as he started making structures, uh, they kind of kept becoming more and more complex and more and more um, where you'd have to play things very specifically in the game. And so it was kind of cool to see like uh, someone who is surprised, I guess, by their design, you know, who, who in the discovery and trying things out, um, created a game that was a little different than they thought it would be. I thought that was really kind of cool and speaks to the, kind of the artistic nature of designing games. Uh, and the fact that someone could be surprised by what they were doing. Uh, it was also cool to, to see that uh, the kind of genesis of this game design is that Uwe wanted something that he could play test and work on and stuff and require no other people because of quarantining for COVID. And so that's kind of how this became a solo slash two player game was he wanted to be able to just work on something on his own. Uh, and these are all kind of like delicious details, including pictures of like prototypes and early versions of uh, what the game kind of has now become, you know, looking in its final form. So that was something I just thought really was interesting. I'm always interested to hear the artistic process of anything. Uh, and Uwe gets into, 
um, Oren Einberger Canal here. So that is my pick for the month. Uh, thought it was a really cool designer diary and I can't wait to learn more about that game. My Murph pick is this mosaic of Batoku by Katia Howitson. This is so cool. And Katia does a whole bunch of different mosaics all over stuff. And these mosaics are made out of board game pieces, little meeples and little dice and little chits and stuff. And man, these are just so darn cool. I've seen a couple of these around. I realized we've never actually talked about it in these Murph picks. So I was like, I gotta talk about it because I saw this Patoku one and I was like, that is so cool. But there's a whole bunch of different ones for different games. There's like Too Many Bones. There's even stuff like Baby Yoda. There's a couple of things for like the Dice Tower and our family plays games. There's so many of these different ones. I think it's so cool. And I'm just curious, Katya, like, do you have just bins of, do you have the go through all these games to find these bits? God, I hope not, because that sounds like a lot of work. But nonetheless, I think these are just so cool. And I feel like we we constantly are pointing out these really cool like art or craft projects around board games because we just love our board game hobby, but I love that people have board game as a hobby and then other things as a hobby. And I love when they come together. I think it's super, super, super cool. And these mosaics are one of the coolest things I've ever seen in board games. I think it's so, so cool and so creative. I think it's rad. Go ahead and check out the rest of them because they're absolutely amazing. All right, so the last thing we do before I go into our little outro is what was our personal favorite game of the month? Mike, what was your favorite thing you played this month? It's been tougher, man. We've been playing so much stuff lately, but I think it's gonna have to be Wayfarers of the South Tigris. Yeah. We got a chance to get a copy and play it, and it, it's really good. It immediately jumped up to possibly the, our favorite Garfield game. Yeah, There's maybe. There's so much to explore. I wanna play this again and again. I've soloed it, I've played it, I wanna yeah. play it more. Uh, it's just really capturing my attention yeah, right now, I, so I, it's super good. <laughs> I really like it too. It's it's my, my favorite Garfield games at this mm. point. It's it's really really fun. My favorite game is a, a, a game called Decorum. This is a cooperative deduction Heck game. Yeah. We've been super into cooperative deduction. This is a game where you are. Um, all living together in the same house and you are trying to design the house, but you have specific things you want and right. everyone else has specific things they want and you have to design that, but you don't know what each other want. We're trying to make each other happy while making sure we're happy first and foremost. And it's literally called the game of passive aggressive cohabitation because you change something <laughs> in the house and then everyone else has to say like, you get to say, yeah, I don't like that. They're like, I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. Right. But they don't get to say why. And it's just really, really fun. It's awesome. And it's just, it just I, it's probably my favorite game of the year so far. I really, oh, yeah. really like it. I like it so much. I think it's so much fun. So Decorum is my pick for Such this month. Such a great pick. We've been having so much fun with that. Those are just our picks of this month. What is your favorite game that you played this yeah. month? Whether it's newer, older, what have you, let us know your favorite game from this month that you played in the comments below. And that's gonna be it. I think we'll just, we'll end it on that. We're gonna let it rip everybody. Thanks for joining for another month of that hotness. Hot. I am Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph and we will see you next month. Bye everybody. <laughs>